tell me about Brooklyn, where you were raised. Uh, when I was there, Brooklyn. I mean, it was, you know. What would you what what, gonna, what would you be seeing in Brownsville, Brooklyn, growing up? What was I seeing? Yeah, describe your neighborhood. Oh, everything it's bad. I mean, like they did a movie. It, they down there. They down there did a movie called New Jack City. And they were talking about the building, the Carter. But that mm. was that was on a, that was on a, that was on a corner of where of where of where, of where I lived. That hurts it a lot. Lot, mm -hmm. lot, 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 on Lot Avenue, it was the Carter, for real. <laughs> yeah. Great movie, but not a great place to, to be a kid. Not a great place to grow up. <laughs> but you know what? It taught me everything that I know today, so. Yeah. It is kind of fun in those places. <laughs> it's fun to be little in those places, but you don't want to raise your own kids in there. So what, what was your dad like? I talked to Danny, and he, and he was telling me how great a dad you had. Tell me about your dad. That's phenomenal. My dad is a father that we've been together. You know what I'm saying? He got nine boys. He kept his boys together. You know what I'm saying? And I respect him for that. And, uh, you know, my father is a, he's a, he's a cool dude. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at times he can be zero tolerance, you know, and at times he just, he's a cool dude on earth. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but, you know, he taught us structure and, 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 and you know, and, uh, you know, the thing that he taught us is more than money could ever give us. Mm hmm Yeah. What kind of kid were you? Well, I was wild. <laughs> and Buck just, just love fight. Like, you know, I mean, like, my main problem was school or grades or anything. My main problem was just behavior. Just fighting on job of a dial. Like, fighting was good to me. Like, I was, I was like one of those, you know, now I'm, I do a program now. Uh, you know, all around the country about bullying. And, um, I was the kid that would go around and, 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 and beat the bullies up and mess with the kids. So, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, 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 you know, I was always a little guy. You know, all of my brothers are six foot eight older, bigger than me. Yeah. You know, I'm the little, I'm, I'm, I'm the smallest one. But they <laughs> say you have to fight anybody on top of a dime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I, that's how that was. And now, all the, out of all the Judah boys, who caught the most knockouts in the street? Uh, yeah. uh, between myself and Daniel, probably. Yeah, Daniel said it was him. Yeah. <laughs> he said he told me to ask you. Yeah. And, and you'll vouch that it was Daniel, but. Who? Daniel. Dan Daniel said, "Ask Zab who caught more knockouts in the street." Yeah, between you know myself and Daniel here. Yeah. 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 You know, Daniel, he's. He was a street kid, a street knockout, a knockout artist, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm hmm So, you know. Yeah, man. So, so describe the, the situation. It was, it was your father was boys with Mark Breland, right? Okay, yeah. You see me go to the ATM? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> your your, father, so your father and Mark Breland are boys, right? They were, they were boys when you were growing up. Mark it was Breland. what? Mark Breland and your father were boys... Like real close, right? Yeah, but yeah, but we was kids for that. We didn't have no kind of uh, connection with that. Oh, you didn't you didn't learn uh, boxing from Mark Breland at all? No, no, never. No. So, so who who taught you the skill of boxing? My father. My father did. Taught you everything. So, so how old were you when he, when your father started showing you techniques and stuff? I had my first fight at six years old. Is that the? How old were you when you first started fighting? He just showed you stuff since you were. No, no I had my first competition fight at six years old. Yeah, yeah, and, and describe the, the amateur boxing system days in New York back then. What did, what did you see in the gym when you'd go? Oh man, like I see, I used to watch my dad's bar and everything like that, and you know, I used to always get the drill, like you know, this this is what I want to do. I, I, I want to be just like him. Yeah. So you were good right away. Um, I wouldn't say so, but people always say that I had talent. Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say that I was a, a you know, a, a home run hitter right out the gate. I wouldn't consider myself that. Mm -hmm. And inside your house, when you when you started boxing, like how how was it being being in the house with all those brothers and, and you're all fighting? Was it a competitive fight? Yeah. Um, it was uh. It was, at times, it was every man for itself, 
And at times it was, you know, it was unity, you know what I'm saying? My, my dad always believed in, you know, he would tell us, you know, don't let me catch y'all fighting each other. Don't let me catch you doing that, you know what I'm saying? You never fight your brother. You know what I mean? So we always had, we always had that kind of structure, but I mean, I always felt bad for somebody else that they try to go up against one of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, myself, and, and this is not bragging, but I don't remember me or none of my brothers ever losing a street fight, ever. Hmm. That's saying something. That's saying something in Brooklyn. So <laughs> Brooklyn, no. Brooklyn, no. We love Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn made us, yeah. you know, come, come, come up to Brooklyn. We learn everything that we learn, you know what I mean? So, we never take, we never take, never worry about us, Brooklyn, you know? That's right, man. And would you spar? Would you spar with your brothers? Yeah, we we would spar. I mean, we would either get mad at each other in the house. I mean, oh yeah. the best thing that we could do in the house is when we get mad is go in the basement and put the gloves on. Yeah, you know, I mean, now my father would get mad, but at least he would more or less tolerate that. You know, he would tolerate us going to the basement and duking it out, like, you know, like men. But he wouldn't tolerate us fighting each other. No way. No. Yeah. And you were 110 and five as an amateur. What what's your best memories of your amateur days and traveling and everything? What was your What do you look back at it with, with good memories about? Low. <clears throat> Okay, you guys are back on? Yep, I'm here. I'm here. Thank you, Davina. Okay, go ahead. Okay, tell, tell me about your your, the, your favorite places you went, Zab, as an amateur. In all around the world. Yeah, I know. I know you've just been to Russia. I know you, you, you're you so cool with the Russians, you, your name is Nikolai now. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> Call me Nikolai. Yeah, man. Exactly. Zab, Nikolai. So, uh -huh. You just did get back from Russia. What, what, what were you doing out there? I was in Moscow. I was uh, got some business for Super Jew Promotions. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. Just mm -hmm. bran branching out in Russia. Well, you know, I mean, you can't call yourself a world champion if you can't go fight all around the world. That's right. You're a champion of the world. World champion. Yeah. Did you did you wear a, a furry hat? It was it even was it even cold there? It's warm there now, right? I to <laughs> It's summer's out right now. You don't. We can't. Us, uh, us Americans are not equipped to go there in the winter time. Nah. Nope. No way. Our our biggest coats we would die in it out, out there. Yeah. You gotta see the pound like the, like they wear ten pound coats. Yeah. <laughs> keep warm. A ten pound coat. That's why you don't understand the Russians are so big because <laughs> they're walking around with them 10 pound coats. <laughs> That's five true. pound and five pound hats on your head. I mean, you're going to get big too. You ever you ever see their president? Their president wrestles, does karate. You guy's crazy, man. Yeah. Everybody can fool I got a chance to meet him. Yeah, Did I you? met him. Did you? What, what's he say to you? Does he know you? Yeah, he of course he knows me. Yeah. What's he say to you? You know, welcome to my country. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. It made my my uh, stay there very pleasant. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. You're that big. That's crazy, man. Yeah, it's cool. So, did you go to Russia before, or was this your first time there? First time in Russia. Yeah. Moscow. Yeah. So, so when you were an amateur, where's where's the the best places you got to visit? Most people from New York are just stuck there, stuck in Brooklyn, but you got to travel around the whole. Um, world. yeah, I went to Austria. I mean, probably the United States. We went everywhere. We went everywhere. All of the all of the states. Yeah. Like you know, uh, I've, I've 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 traveled by tour bus from 
uh, Las Vegas to Florida to New York. So that pretty much covers the United States. You know what I'm saying? So I pretty much rode through every state that I had to because we, we went across on the bottom, came back across the top. So mm -hmm. pretty cool. And as far as, as, far as traveling as an amateur, we went to Austria, London, uh, uh, Venezuela, yeah. uh, Morocco. See, that's cool though. It's cool that that you get to you got to see those things when most most people are just stuck, you know, never get to go anywhere. But that's a great thing. Yeah, about so I, as a as a kid, I, I pretty much went a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of places. Yeah. As, a, as an adult, the vacation there with my family, we've been around places too, all over the Caribbean. I know we enjoyed the Caribbean, so we went down Caribbean, Mexico, uh, Puerto Vallarta. Mm -hmm. uh, my kids, my kids, you know, young too, but they done been around a lot, a lot of places too. Yeah, you're a two-time U.S. national champion. How how did you feel winning winning your first U.S. national championship? Uh, you know, as a kid, it was, you know, it was like winning with the championship of the world as a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Just, you know, qualify you to travel out. You know, as you're a kid, you travel out, the opportunity you get the first time you get to travel out to these different states and, 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 and be amongst the best of the best of each state. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it, it feels good. Yeah. And... and you're a 1996 PAL national champion. How'd that feel? And and why didn't you stick around for for the Olympics that year? What happened? Did you get beat in the box house? No, I was an alternate on the nice Olympics. You know, years later I found out that my real reason for not making it. You know, not to make an excuse or anything. You know, I just fell to a politics thing. Yeah, yeah. But it was pretty. It was pretty. But you know, I got an opportunity of sitting out with the coach and stuff, and he playing. I didn't feel so bad after. I mean, even, you know, I went ahead and did what a lot of the, my team members didn't do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, besides Mayweather, maybe two or three more, Antonio Tarver. None of them could, you know, get, got to be five times champion of the world. Yeah. How'd you feel not making it to the Olympics, though, at the time? Were, were you kind of devastated by that? Yeah, I was very devastated. I almost came on the road just not boxing the wall. Yeah, because you weren't used to losing, man. 100, 110 and 5. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to lose, man. It's hard to lose when, when you do have to take it. Yeah. But you know what? It also humbles you because it teaches you what kind of person you are on the inside. You know what I mean? Because, you know, if the bigger person, the low loser come back. Yeah. When you when you, when you, when you win in, you never just suffer defeat. You never know what the side of defeat tastes like. Mm -hmm. Defeat is a... It's a nasty taste. <laughs> it does. It is. Nasty taste, you know, and uh, no one likes it to taste the feet, so. Well, if someone likes it, they'll do it a lot, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Make it a habit. So so you, you put that loss behind you and you and you decide to turn pro. You remember who and where where the fight was and what the result was? Uh, who what? Who you fought? In the first fight? As a professional? Yes. Yeah, I fought Michael Johnson. Michael oh. Johnson on the co main event. I was a co main event to Pernell Whitaker on HBO in Miami. Yeah, that's right. So it, was a, it was an insane feeling. It was, most people say, well, that's, that's big, that's big. Not to me. That was the scariest thing ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be going from an amateur with headgear and a t shirt and and all this to be going to a professional standing there with no shirt on, mm -hmm. no headgear, <laughs> in front of 18,000 fan people. Yeah. Wow. Because, like, you know, I'm, I'm going from a gymnasium, an amateur gymnasium with about 200 people watching, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To an 18,000 seat arena. Remember, I was a co main event. I was a fight right before Pernod Whitaker went up. And this is this when we're talking about Pernod Whitaker was pound for pound the greatest fight in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So how scared were you that that day? Were you were you I was, real? I, I mean, I was, I was more scared as an opportunity vision, but you know the ring walk was terrifying. But you know, <laughs> once I got to the ring and the bell rung, and he came at me and threw the first right hand and tried to hurt me, that was it. 
it all went out the window. Everything came back to normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so came back to normal. How did you feel after that win? I felt great. I felt like you know that was my first time knocking somebody out as a professional with the little eight ounce gloves on. No head gear, and it felt like nothing. And after that, I went on a reign of ten and zero. It changed. Hello. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought your phone died again. I didn't hear you. Um, it was blacked out. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was. So, did I? You know, it was pretty good. I think I was six. Six and zero, six knockouts. Then I ran to this guy, Trey, Trey, Trey Crane. I got my first decision, and I got cut. I got cut in the fight. He was a tough Indian kid. Very, very, very strong. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I. That's why I had to figure out. You know what kind of guy you are. Yeah. So how how did you feel when you when you felt that blood coming down for the first time ever? Yeah, it was weird. It was just hot. It was hot. It was very hot. I got some hot liquid substance going outside of my face. Mm -hmm. But it was a night. You know, I was like, oh wow. When I seen it, I was like, oh wow. It just made me want to. You know, it just showed me that that I really was going to be destined to be a good fighter because it just brought the animal out of me. Yeah, it affects everyone different. I remember uh, it kind of kind of threw even Chad Dawson off when when he just got cut against Hopkins for that for that round. I, I noticed, but you were young though. How, how'd you take that? Were you were you panicked feeling? Nah, I took it good. I took it like it was nothing. Yeah. So. I said, you cut me. You, you know, the worst thing you could do is that lion take some blood. Yeah. Best thing you could do is do what Johnny Tapia would do. Just dab it and lick it. Just freak the guy out. Uh, that's yeah. kind of disgusting, though. I know. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> but I ain't doing that, but I, I just sucked it up. So, all right, let's go to work. But if you did, I think it would freak those people out. <laughs> you know? I know. I'd probably freak myself out, too. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how'd you feel at that point in your career, though? You you win that fight. Were, were, you, were you feeling the expectations from New York and, and having the great amateur career? And yeah. Did you feel the expectations? Uh, hey, did did you feel the expectations? Of what? Of of being from New York and having such a great amateur career and everyone expecting big things from you at that point in your career? But no, because you know, I guess you know, my, my dad and everybody else Kept me sheltered away from that, okay? You know, I was pretty much sheltered away from society, you know. I wasn't really allowed. You know, I remember at, at 18 years old, I remember my dad putting one of his guys with me. Big, 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 big guy, like 300 pounds, name is Hess. You know what I'm saying? I remember him going everywhere with me. Mm. And my dad always keeping him with me. And I always be like, like, I couldn't go nowhere without this dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was always like, man, why is this dude got to stay with me? I mean, now I know, I was younger, my dad put security with me. But as a, you know, as a kid, I think the excuse was, uh, I don't know, you can't go, you can't go nowhere by yourself or sign, 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 sign it. He's going to be with you, make sure everything good. Yeah, <laughs> so it was kind of a thought. But, you know, at the time, as a kid, you know, you know, you, you didn't really care. Yeah, you're safe. You were safe, man. No one's messing with you. Not for me, no. <laughs> And then your your first big test came against Mickey Ward. I remember hearing you say that his left hook to the body was the hardest you ever got hit. Do you do you still feel that way? Yeah, yeah Mickey Mickey Ward was one of the toughest fighters I fought. Oh, definitely. Was toughness. Mm -hmm. Like you know, at that at that time for the stage I was at, I'm boxing. I was probably one of the, a, a tough fight because I was like I was a kid still. Yeah. You know, I had 15 professional fights. Mm -hmm. I had to be, I wasn't even 20 years old yet. I was still, I, I, was, I was still 19. And I went against a solid grown man. You know, he was like, he had like 34 or something professional fights. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was my first time, you know, and he had like 10 years on me. And that was like my first time going up against a real solid grown man. And I was like, and I prevailed. And, you know, and once I won, I understood it was, it was time, to, it was, it was just, you know, everything was going to change from that day on, and everything did change. 
Yeah, it was your you first. Know, the way boxing looked at me, and the way I looked at boxing, it was, you know, it was a, like a, it was like a marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was the day you won your USBA light welterweight championship. How's that feel? Yeah, that was my first championship right there. My first championship I won, and that was a that was a great feeling. I was, you know, I'm 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 keeping that belt on for like days. I slept that night. I slept in that belt. I yeah. put it on. So I slept in the bed with it. Yeah. I, I, I remember just taking it off and putting it on the on the toilet <laughs> in the shower. I sat on the toilet to get in the shower. And I, and I was in the shower watching it. I kept peeking at it. <laughs> I got to make, make sure that nobody came in there and messed with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, and as soon as I got out, dried up my clothes off, put my belt on. <laughs> well, I would go out. I would, I would walk around the street with my girl. People be like, yo, what is that? Yeah. Like, I'm in chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm see. in chat. Yeah, man. That would feel great. What'd you do with that belt? You still got it today? Nah, I gave it to my dad. No, oh, okay. My dad keep it. I gave a belt to my dad and a belt to my mom. They both got seven shit both in now. That's great, man. Yeah. Then, then you fought Daryl Tyson and, and, and stopped him. Oh yeah, Daryl Tyson was cool, man. He was, he was a veteran. Yep. That time when I fought him, he was a veteran knocking guys out. I fought him in, in D.C. at his hometown. It was funny because we fought at this thing called a smoker. It was my first time ever knowing about something. It was like a smoker, which is my first time fighting outside of an arena. It wasn't an arena. It was a uh, like a ballroom. It was like a ballroom dinner, a black tie affair. I, 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 you know, at that time, I didn't know what the hell was going on, but when I got in there, you know, they, they kept us in the back the whole time, the whole time. And when time to walk to the ring, it was like a cloud of smoke. I couldn't even see the ring. It was so smoky in there. And they was in there smoking cigars and all this <laughs> and all that. And I was like, wow, what is this? You know, and, but I went in there. Oh, screw it. I went in there, I did a 11 round decision over down Tyson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty it's tough. Yeah. Veteran guy. Was that a, was that a title elimination fight? Yeah, it was a title elimination. Yeah. Did you it feel was that? funny because at the time, you know, Mike Tyson was one of my, one of my best friends. And uh, I remember me fight a guy by the name of Daryl Tyson. Mm -hmm. And I, I would call Mike, like, Mike, it, it, they want me to fight this guy, man. I'm like, <laughs> so Mike, so Mike, like, all right, fight him. And I'm like, I don't know. I said, yo, I think he might be your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike was like, why you say that? I said, his name is Tyson. <laughs> he was like, nah, nah, nah. Just because his name is Tyson don't mean that he's my cousin. He just <laughs> that same last name. And I was like, oh, he not related to you? <laughs> nah, 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 he not. I was like, oh, all right, I'm going to kill this mother. <laughs> but that was funny. I know me like two days. I was just nervous. I was like, yo, I got to fight Tyson Cousin. Like, yo, dude, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I was like, I got to call Mike and tell him. <laughs> he, 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 I laughed at that. He was, he, he was like, you crazy for that. I was like, I ain't know. Now, you said you said you, you were boys with Tyson back then. Are you still boys? Because you're both living in Vegas, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's That's I see him all the time. Are you, are you bigger than Mike now? <laughs> he got real small, right? He's living. He's living a different life now. He's meat free. Mike is good now. Mike is doing. Yeah. Mike is actually doing. He's doing excellent right now. Like, oh, he looks great. Looks, looks like he. Yeah, can. he lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he got a little. Yeah, Broadway show going happen. You know, he, he, he got a show coming to Broadway now. Tyson show. Yeah, I saw. I saw pictures of you at the at the Tyson show. What'd you think? How'd that go? Uh, it's good. It's good. I thought all, every show he got better. Cause I went to the first show. I went to all three shows. You know, I'm a fan. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so and uh, he uh, he got better as the days went on. You know, <laughs> from the first day to the last day. No, 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 I'm 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 lying. I did miss one show. It was four shows. But from the first day to the last day, it was totally different. You know, by the last day, he was more comfortable. He was more forward. He was more. You know. You know, was, you know, he was moving his hands and everything. Like you, you could tell, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. I'm glad for Mike. He's doing good. Yeah, me too. Big homie. Yeah.
then you fought Wilfredo Negron after Daryl Tyson. And you, that was for the IBF championship. How'd you feel going into that fight? Your first title fight? Uh, Negron, it was, kind of, it was a good fight. I'm not going to ram my head to the ground. He was the first person to ever like, do something dirty to me. Took my head and, j- and jumped the back of my neck and rammed it to the ground. Mm. When I went down. Like he just like sat like sat on my neck and power dropped my head into the ground. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. After that, I was like, that just made me mad. After that, I knocked him out. <laughs> so you knocked him out. That had to feel great. Yeah. How'd you feel winning that world championship? First world championship. Great. You know, at that time I was winning so much. It, 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 it just so cool. It was like I can't that. That's it. So it was no big thing. No, because, I, I mean, already I was already suffering from maybe three years being rich already. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was so sad my money. You know, I was, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. and, you know it kind of turned me more to an animal. Yep. Like, I'm rich now, and I'm champion in the world? Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, it's hard, man. When, when you went from nothing to something like that at such a young age. Could just do crazy things. Yeah. You, know? you never know. See everything because gotta have suspense for the movie that's coming. That's See right. a movie. <laughs> that's your life story movie. Now who's gonna play you? It's something you wanna see. It's, 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 it's like no other story. And you know, I know every, everyone say that about their life and say that about their story. But you know, I've seen the Tyson story. I've seen the Ali stories. I've seen the Joe Louis stories. And mine is totally different. Mm-hmm. Now who would play Zab Judah though? Would Zab Judah play Zab? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, the way I want to do the movie is I want to be, because I've documented a lot of history of my life on video. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of taste from amateur, from professional, from you know. So I wanted the movie to be splashes of real, a real life video, mm-hmm. and the splashes of acting. Yeah. So it's gonna be dope. I don't know if you ever seen a movie like that before, like the movie Crash, where it shows some of the real life, real life movie. Mm-hmm. Then part of it goes back to acting. Yeah. Now, what do you at think? Time you, so at time when you watching them, watching the movie, you're gonna see real. You're gonna be like, oh, that's sad. That's really sad. Like you know, mm-hmm. it's gonna be really real stuff for me. Yeah. I mean, I think you could play yourself, man. I could see you acting. You never changed. You look just the same. You know? Yeah. I that. <laughs> you just got to find like someone who could play a little little boy Zab. Yeah, little boy Zab. I don't know who that would be. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Your son? <laughs> you don't know. I know who it would be. Okay, okay. You're keeping things confidential, maybe. Yeah, I keep everything confidential. So tell me about the, the Jan Bergman fight. You put him down twice first in the man. first round. Connecticut. Yeah, it was a good, it was a good experience. Yeah. That was Connecticut, yeah, right? No. Right? You remember it was Connecticut? Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, I had to go see you, man. I was there. <laughs> that was uh, a must that I go see you. I'm surprised. I remember you. it like it was yesterday. I remember catching Jan Bergman on the stairs. What, me and one of my security guys, we caught him. Uh, it's just like. Before the uh, weigh in, he was uh, he didn't want to he didn't want to go in the elevator because there was so many Zab Judah family members at the hotel. He wanted to go on the stairs with him and his trainer. Very 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 nice guy, you know. But back then I was a, you know, it was he was in a savage sport doing savage things, you know. what I'm saying so it was, it was anything goes, you know. And I remember catching him on the stairs. I caught him on the stairs because it was so because he was getting in the elevator and it was so packed. He was like, no, nah, I'll just take the stairs. Somebody told me, yo, he on the staircase, he on the staircase. It was crazy, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. And somebody told me, and I ran around to the stairs. I caught him on the stairs, and he didn't speak English. No, no. He was coming, and I stopped him on the stairs. I said, yo, you, you, I'm knocking you out. Mm-hmm. Knock you out, cold. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was crazy like this. I was like, I'm knocking yeah. you out, cold. He looked at me, and he started smiling, like, oh, oh. He tapped me on my shoulder, like, oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like, 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, okay, have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> like, you could tell he didn't understand nothing I said to him. Like, you know, I pat him on his shoulder. And he was such a nice guy that nothing I said to him made him mad. He was more happy at the opportunity of being over here in America. And see, later on in life, I realized what it is for those people to get a visa to come to America, you know what I'm saying, and experience over here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you know, I never thought that, you know, me being from right here, you live being from New York, all we got to do is get in the car and drive to Connecticut. It was nothing, you know. It was a hop, skip, and a jump. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but, me, you know, me being young and having money, I was like, nah, I want to take a... Uh, I'm, 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 I'm running a Jan Braveman fight. I took a... Uh, I took a uh, eight-passenger... Uh, uh, I forgot the name of it at the time. It was an eight-passenger super... Super chopper. That's what they called it. It was nice. Be- mm. Decked out chopper. We left on the West Side Highway in New York, Manhattan. All the way to Connecticut. Wow. Yeah, like 20 minutes. Wow. You know, it was nice. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. You know, I was, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was a kid just caught up in the money. That's might, it. Might have been a UFO got you there that quick. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Actually, they are. You know, you know, wheels up. Wheels up on a private jet from Wheels to Wheels Down is only um, 28 minutes from Las Vegas to uh, California, Burbank, California. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. close. It's <laughs> close. It's a, it's, a, it's a different kind of life. I mean. <laughs> yeah. How, how'd life become different after winning the championship? Like, did that you made know? It made worse. <laughs> it just made everything worse. Right? Multiplied oh, I can't wait till the movie come out. I can't wait till the movie come out. When is it coming out? Is there a date set? When when's it coming out? No, no, there's no date yet. There's no date. Everything is still. I mean, there's still parts of my life that I'm still documenting, so I can't. So, it ain't time for it. Maybe another, another two years. Yeah. God, God, God willing, I make it that long. Another two years. It'd be time for the movie. Man. If I, not, I hope you make. Wife got instructions. <laughs> she knows it. She's still gonna make it happen. Hope you're not not in any kind of trouble where you won't make it, Zab. Two years. No, I, I don't. No, I don't think about trouble. I, I mean, I, I promise I won't be in no, no no kind of trouble. Nah. Because I'm not gonna be here, you know. But I'm talking about God willing. God yeah, willingly spare my life, you know, to you know that long. Yep. Because you know we 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 all here on ball of time. You know what I mean? Exactly. Ball, I exactly. promise none of us. So. I was just saying that. Like I said, you know, God willing, two years from now, I'm still here. Yeah, man. Every second. It's going to come out. And if not, it's still going to come out. It's still going to come out. Because she got all this to do what she got to do. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yep. Then after after you won the title, you fought Junior Witter, and you went to England. How'd they treat you in England going there to fight Junior Witter at that time? England was good because I went over there with Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. I went with Tyson, so, you know, when Tyson goes, the country stands still. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> yeah, you were real cool with Tyson. Your, your whole country stands still. Yeah. You know, especially at that time when he was still fighting and everything. It was, like, crazy. Yeah. And we had a great time over there. You know, we went to London first, then we went to Scotland. Mm. Uh, both countries was at attention. It was great. And I, and I was just always, like, in the back of my mind, like, yo, this is, this is what I want. This is bad. You know, he's known as he, he got all this from the sport of boxing. You know, mm-hmm. it's dope. Is that when Tyson fought Savarese and just savaged him? <laughs> Savage in one round. Mm-hmm. A lot of things went on during our stay, but that's for the movie. Can't tell you. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right, man. I'll wait for the movie. And then, uh, when, when you went to Scotland and Tyson was, was giving that, that after Savarese speech, about eating Lennox's kids. What's, what's going through your head? <laughs> I was there, I was standing right there next to him. Yeah, I remember that. You were, you were like, you were like right big brother, him. little brother. And um, I was just, I just remember looking at him. <laughs> I mean, being around Mike, you always see. You never know what's his stuff, Mike. Cause Mike is, Mike is not a predictable person. No, he's not. He's unpredictable. You know what I mean? So, you know, but from things around Tyson with me, he's always been a loving and caring brother. You know, one thing I can say is he has a heart. Oh, yeah. That's compassion. It's hard. A lot of people don't get to see it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I also don't take the time to understand them, you know, but I've seen them at a different light, you know. I've seen them when the camera's on. I've seen them when the camera's off. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I've seen them when it's lights, the camera's action, when it's not. I've seen them at a rich and rich, and I've seen them at a poor to the poor, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I've seen them at different 
times in life and life. And, you know, all I can ever say is I pick my hat up to him and commend him as a person. He's a great human being. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you could tell. You could tell Mike is a great guy. You were like big brother and little brother. That was that was a good time, man. Huh? It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. What do you remember about the, the junior? Both up together, it was, I would say underestimated. That would be the number one word I could use for both of us. Who's that? Underestimated. You know, people don't people don't people don't know us. You know, when you underestimate something, you don't give it a chance. Yeah. And you over you overshower it like you just you don't put thought into it. And I think that is a lot with people. You know, they took us. You know, me. I probably was judged by you know. I can't, you know, by, by how I presented myself, you know, and I presented myself, yeah. you know, not, you know, I, by the way I presented myself, I wouldn't expect nobody to treat me well. It, come on. I presented myself like a young hooligan, you know, we were, we were outlaws. Outlaws, you know, I, I got a tattoo on my arm, outlaw. Box your car. When, you know, my cousins, and, uh, you know, I put a tattoo on my arm, we passed away, and outlaw, and I live by the mentality, you know, outlaw. We do what I do, and I, I got about 100, maybe 125 people strong with, that had the same tattoo with the same belief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy. Are you saving that for the movie, too? Your belief? What was the Not belief? for the movie. No, okay, okay. I got something for you. Hold <laughs> oh, what, what do you remember about the Junior Witter fight? He was pretty good, right? Slick guy. How about the what fight? Junior Witter. Fight? Junior Witter. Um, Junior Witter? Oh, no. He moved around a lot. He moved around. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It was the last minute replacement because I remember us having a different opponent at the time. And uh, our, our opponent didn't make weight. And, uh, Jason Rowland, he didn't, you know, he wasn't ready for the fight. So last minute, two days, they gave me this guy, this Junior Witter guy. And uh, they said he trained under the person I've seen. He was, you know, he had the same trainer and the same kind of style, and, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I was like, what? So. Mm -hmm. So were you worried about going to the scorecards at all? If, if the possibility before the fight? Because you handled them pretty easy, I think, right? I mean, you know, I did what I had to do. You know, I went in and worked hard and, you know, sacrifice and. Yeah. And, and oh, I had to put on. Yeah. After that fight, you you uh, put your title on the line against Teron Millett. That was his old title. What do you remember about Teron Millett? I think you were down. Were you down in the first round in that fight? Yeah, yeah. I was down in the first round. What do you think? I just remember him. I just remember him telling me that. I just remember him telling me that I wasn't the real the real champion. Mm -hmm. That that and, and, and that uh, that he was uh, the world champion. I won my belt by luck, and uh, in order, and I never fought no, never fought no world class fighters, and and I remember telling him that uh, it's exciting you say this to me because tomorrow night he will become the first world class fighter I knock out, and I promised him that the fight wouldn't go to a round. And uh, I made a side bet with him, with one of his uh, trainers. Hey! I made a side bet with one of his trainers. I mean, with, with his manager. And I told his manager, I said, uh, he will not hit the last bell ring. And his manager told me, no way, that I was a fool. And told me I wouldn't hit the last bell ring. And we bet it $10,000. And there's a picture, there's a picture on, on the internet. Because I put the picture up with the manager handing me a check over for $10,000. <laughs> mm, that's nice. <laughs> I told him, I said, he's not going to make 10 rounds. I mean, he's not going to make uh, 12, 12, 12 rounds. Said, oh, you're a big mouth punk. You ain't got nothing. You can't do nothing. And you will get knocked out. I said, okay. No problem. Now, do you think do you think you went down in that fight because you were, like, kind of mad? No, I, got, I went down in that fight because I got hit. And so do you think you were fighting with, like, like, uh, like I guess, were you trying to hurt him more because of the... the Trash he was talking? Uh, no, I mean, me going down had nothing to do with Trash told you. He just would, you know, he caught me with a good punch. You know, coming in, you know, not protecting myself, and he caught me. 
No. Uh, everyone, everyone said how hard he hit. He's a hard hitter, huh? Well, I'm a, yeah, it's one of very, very, very strong you know, guy. I mean, that was one attribute going into the fight. We knew that, you know, you can't take away from him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's strong, he's strong, he's a strong puncher. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, we let that, we let that go on, that happened, and, and then we got back to business. Yeah. I know, uh, I know you were happy getting that check handed over to you, so I know that. that yeah. That's well, so good. I mean, you know, I, I made good money for the, for the fight. Yeah. And then, uh, after that, you fought, uh, Reggie Green. You fought Reggie Green. Yeah. Reggie Green. What do you remember about the fight with Reggie Green? Uh, Reggie Green. Reggie Green was actually, I, I had spoken with Reggie Green a couple of times back in training camp, man, in the Pernet Whitaker training camp. Reggie Green was there with us, and he spoke with me. 